how much voltage can we get from one of these CR2025 batteries? They're rated for 3 volts. But what if we want much more voltage? I can't change the laws of physics. How about 27 volts or even more? Not bad. In this video, I'll show you how this little circuit works and we'll lay it out on a PCB and get it made up. It's pretty cool. You may remember one of these from a previous video. It's one of these uh, clever little um, LCD things that you can draw on and then you can clear. Now, in the previous video, we took this apart and unfortunately I zapped it and broke it. Uh, now, it does need around 27 volts. You can go lower, but um, 27 volts seems to clear it nicely. So what I've done is I've made a little boost circuit here. It's a dual feed based thing. So if I click this button, it clears it. So if we uh, bring in our uh, multimeter, you can see what voltage we get. I'll draw some stuff just to make sure you can see it happening. Push the button, we go up to around 27 volts. So not bad. Um, it's a really simple circuit. Now with the Jewel Thief, I'm quite late to the party on these. They were very popular on YouTube around eight years ago. You can use a toroidal um, inductor core so you can take off this copper wire and rewind it. Or you can just use a couple of inductors. So these are one millihenry inductors. So on this PCB, we've got the coin cell battery, which is our power. I've added a little resistor to limit the current and a little um, decoupling capacitor to give it a bit of reservoir. Go through a switch, go through the two inductors. We have our base resistor here going into our MP, uh, NPN transistor. The shock your diode going from the collector. And here we have a, another capacitor to store the energy. There's a um, Zenia diode, a 27 volt Zenia diode, and a little bleed resistor. So it does work quite nicely. So what I was wondering is just how much current are we drawing from this poor little coin cell? So I'm going to wire up my um, Nordic power monitor and do a quick capture. Okay, so I've wired up the Nordic power meter and I've opened up the software. So I'm in ampere mode and we'll hit start, which will start recording. And now let's come in and click the button and see what happens. I've got my multimeter hooked up. Okay, so that worked. Uh, let's do another one. And another one. And another one. Okay, so we've got some good captures here. Let's, uh, let's highlight. Um, Let's highlight like one of the longer ones. How about this one? So we just shift and select. There we go. So that's a nice zoomed in version. I've got the actual button push selected. So we can see on average, we're drawing 11 milliamps. Which is actually, that's not too bad for a coin cell. That's quite a reasonable current draw for a coin cell. And in total, we've got 9.28 millicoulombs charge. So I've gone off to our friendly AI. I've got a CR2025 battery. I click a button, it uses 9.28 millicoulombs. Let's see, how often can I click the button? So we've got 150 milliamp hours at three volts and times that by, um, I think that looks like 60 times 60, get 540,000 millicoulombs. So it's saying, it's very slow. So we can click our button 58,200 times. Uh, now, of course, there's some real world things, so the coin cell will go down over time. So it's saying maybe we can get 40 to 50,000 reliable presses. So that's not bad, is it? Pretty good. So I think we can turn this uh, little uh, circuit into a PCB and maybe we can fix this board up. So I've also captured a trace on my oscilloscope. So the, the blue trace is on the collector of the transistor and the yellow trace is on the base of the transistor so you can see our base of the transistor is pulled very low so that's on two volts per division so that's um, one two three it's almost minus six volts on the base of our transistor that hard turns off the transistor which means the magnetic field on the inductor on the collector collapses and we get this big spike of voltage so that's 10 20 20 something volts and obviously that's being capped by the Xenia diode on our output and that happens at around sort of 38.7 kilohertz so that charges off our output capacitor pretty quickly 
So uh, that's pretty interesting to look at. Uh, it's a very interesting circuit, definitely worth playing with. So it turns out, with a small addition to this circuit, we can actually make a big improvement. So it just requires one more transistor. And what we do is we connect the Xenia diode through to the base of that transistor. So when you go over the voltage that's required, the transistor gets turned off. So our switching transistor here, the base gets pulled down low by the other transistor when you go over the voltage. So let's try this out. So I'll start the recording going. And let's push the button. So I'll do it once. And again. And again. So let's look at our traces now. So if we just go and zoom in on this one. So you can see, let's zoom in a little bit. What we can see is initially, if I can get this to zoom nicely, this, uh, this UI is really difficult to use, very sensitive on the zoom. Okay, well that's that's probably as good as we're going to get. I'll keep doing this, we're going to be here forever. Okay, so if we select this first half, then you can see it's very similar to the measurements we got on the original circuit. But you can see here, as soon as it hits the 27 volts that's limited by our Xenia diode, it drops straight down and we hold the button for this period here. But actually, we just average 1.14 milliamps. So that's absolutely amazing. So yeah, the total time when we got the button held, we actually average 1.53 milliamps, which is 1.27 millicoulombs. So I think we could click the button a lot of times and it would carry on working. So I'm going to knock both these PCBs up and get them sent off to PCB way, and we'll see how well they work when they arrive. Okay, so here is our PCB. So we have the, the pads for mounting the two um, LCD plates, I guess we'll call them. We have the blister button and we have the mounting holes. So let's have a quick look at the 3D viewer, make sure that looks good. So these are our two inductors that will be um, magnetically coupled. Here's our shock key diode. Here's the Xenia diode. This is our reserve capacitor that gets charged up and it's bleed resistor. We have the two connectors for the battery. So they are, oh gosh, here and here. Here's our decoupling capacitor and here's our current limiting resistor. So then on the other side, here's the blister button and the two pads. We'll have to cut these um, fairly short so they don't poke through, but um, it's looking good. So the best thing to do to really check this is to actually print it out at one-to-one -one scale and compare it with the actual PCB. So let's do that now. So this is a really good way of checking your PCBs. You just print them out at one-to-one -one scale. So I've got the original PCB here. So if we just lay that on top, you can see that my, um, my mounting holes match up exactly to the PCB. So that's pretty good. So if we get this PCB made, it should mount exactly where this one mounts. And these two pads here for the battery connector are also pretty much in the right place. So I can desolder these battery connectors and solder them onto my new board. Now if we flip the board over and bring the printout of the other side, then we can see that these tabs should pretty much line up. So we can solder the two um, tabs for the um, two plates straight onto these. And the blister button is pretty much in the right place as well. We can be fairly flexible with this. So these blister buttons, you can just peel this off. It's just on some sticky plastic. So we'll peel it off on this board and stick it onto our board and we'll have the nice clicky switch. So let's get back to the computer and actually submit this to PCB way. So everything looks good. Let's get this submitted to PCB way. So what we'll do, is we'll export the um, Gerbers. So we go to Fabrication, Gerbers, and we'll create a folder to put these in. So new folder, Gerbers. And yep, we want to do that. Everything is already selected properly. So we do the plot, generated all the Gerbers. 
and also generate the drill files. So everything's fine here. It's going to go into the same folder. Just hit generate. So there we go. Okay, so we're in our folder. We'll just compress this folder. So and turn it into a zip file. So it's our Gerber's file. And there we go off to PCB way. Okay, so on the PCB way website, we just need to upload our Gerber's file. So click on this. And then I'll just add Gerber files. So I've got my Gerber zip file here. Double click on that. It uploads. It should pick up all the parameters automatically. So there's a two layer board. It's got the size. And then we can choose what we actually want to do. So I think we'll just get five pieces, two layer board. Um, thickness, we will make it slightly thinner. Looking at the existing PCBs, they are incredibly thin. Let's see how thin we can do without actually going up in price. So at the moment, we're getting them for $5, which is pretty amazing. So how thin can we go before the price goes up? Okay, so it looks like a 0.6 is the thinnest we can go and still stick with the five dollars um, and that'll take three to four days to build so the rest of it's all fine uh, i wonder if we can get a different color no that's more expensive no 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 i think we'll stick to green then uh, stick to the five dollars perfect oh, maybe matte green no more expensive purple no okay so we're going for green and uh, we'll stick with white silk screen we're not doing any UV color printing. If you want to see some of that, look at my ZX Spectrum. Uh, and everything else is fine. We're not doing SMD assembly. So calculate. And I'm shipping to the UK. So United Kingdom. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to store up a whole bunch of PCBs that I'm going to get um, designed. And then I'll get them all shipped in one go. So that will be kind of done later so i'll just add a whole bunch of orders to this and then i'll recalculate the shipping so that we get quite good shipping costs so hopefully those pcbs will arrive sometime in the future i'll see you in the next video